Well, joining me now is the former Secretary of State for Education and Conservative MP, Justin Greening. Thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us. Uh, is enough being given to schools to uh, get children recovering properly from the pandemic? Not yet. It was a welcome next step to have additional resourcing coming in last month. But I think everybody would recognise that we need much, much more, not just in terms of investment, but crucially a short term plan to help children catch up and then a longer term levelling up plan for schools. And we have to recognise that there was an attainment gap between the most privileged children and young people and the least privileged in the education system already, even before COVID. Levelling up was about closing that gap. Of course, it's gone a lot wider now, which is why we really do need to see a much more comprehensive, long-term levelling up plan for education from the government coming forward in the autumn. I hope, Adam, it'll be part of the levelling up white paper that gets released. How confident are you that those funds that you believe are needed will be found? Well, only time will tell, but, but we have to look at the fact that this is a long-term investment, not just in these young people, but actually fundamentally for all of us. And this is the talent that is going to power the economy of the future. We need to make sure it doesn't get disrupted by this school shutdown. All of us literally just have one shot at our, our school's education in reality. For this generation, it's been massively disrupted and we can't allow that to have a long-term impact on their future and Britain's future, which is why this matters so much. And what are the practical measures uh, in terms of teaching, longer school day, individual support? What, what are the ones you think are, are required? I think there's probably two, three areas. One is the academic learning, as we saw some of the crucial catch up that's required from maths on English, all of that. The second, I think, is really that broader development for young people, you know, that they get through being in doing sport, cultural activities. And I think the third is that they're making sure they have the mentoring and advice to be able to really take that talent as it's getting developed in the education system and know how they want to deploy it to make sure they can really take advantage of the opportunities that are out there in the UK, we're seeing increasingly in the economy today that there are lots of jobs, but people don't always have the skills to be able to take advantage of them. You tackle that by working upstream. And that's why I said at the beginning of this interview, this is a long term approach we now need to have. And we shouldn't shortchange developing the talent of young people today because it's absolutely vital for all of us that we make sure we invest in it. And do you think there are more demands in, say, primary schools than secondary schools or secondary schools and primary schools, or is this all the way through the education system? I think it's across the board, and we shouldn't also forget that these children are going into further education, they're going to higher education, and those institutions as well will be expected and need to be able to play a role in helping young people catch up lost education. So it's not just about thinking about the investment earlier on in the school system. We've got to look at it right the way through our education system. And I think COVID really is a moment when we can take a fresh look at what our education strategy is and really put levelling up and closing some of those gaps, making sure it's not just about academics, but that wider development of a young person, how they then get the right advice to be able to connect up to opportunity. I think this is a real moment for change and reform, but that is also going to need investment. And should part of that change be a new education secretary, do you think? Well, that could be a matter for the prime minister. But I do think it's important that whose ever name is above the door walking into the DfE, that there's a comprehensive plan for education to be at the heart of the government's levelling up strategy. COVID has massively disrupted huge numbers of young people's education. We can't let that have a long term impact on them. Otherwise, really, it'll be that generation that ultimately pays the price in the long term for COVID. We just can't let that happen. And you don't think that plan is there yet? It's not, but I think it can be. And I would really encourage the government to look at education areas where things are getting better. So, for example, 
there are opportunity areas. These are things I set up as Secretary of State for Education in some of those communities around the country where we know education can get better, we know outcomes can improve. These are place-based pieces of work that look at work inside schools to help and work with teachers and schools, but they also look outside of schools. They're working with local communities. They're working with businesses to look at work experience, really lifting aspiration. And that helps too. I think more opportunity areas is probably one of the most important things the government can announce come the autumn that can really help kickstart a much longer term approach on levelling up Britain through levelling up education outcomes. Justin Greening, thank you very much indeed.